Hi, Amy Cross here, and today we're going to talk about transcribing photo memorials for Find a Grave and Billion Graves. This is a follow up to our Halloween video, which <laughs> talked about finding dead people with our families and friends as a fun Halloween activity. So stay tuned for details on how to transcribe those photographs. <laughs> I hope you had a lot of fun going to cemeteries and taking photographs of headstones with your friends and family. Now we're going to talk more about how to transcribe those photographs that you took as well as perhaps other photographs that other users have uploaded to the sites as an act of service. So let's get started. We're going to first look at Find a Grave. So I have Find a Grave open here and um, this is their main page and I'm signed in. You do need to have an account, which you probably set up an account anyway to take photographs with your family. But um, here you see how you can search for a name and things like that. But today we're gonna focus on contributing. And if you notice down here, you can add a memorial, upload photographs that you've already taken or transcribe photos. And by the way, if you, um, to take photographs previously, that's the way that you can do it with, without having to uh, use data when you're at the cemetery. You can take photographs and then you can later upload them. But now we're going to transcribe photographs. So the transcribe photos button has a two in the circle there and that indicates that I have two photos that I had uploaded um, and they're asking me if I want to transcribe them. So if I click on that, you'll see the photograph that I took when I was at the Santa Clara Cemetery a few days ago. So over here on this side, you're just going to type in the name on the um, headstone. Domatila H. Davis. Um, we don't have a birth, month, or um, date, but we know she was born in 1884. We don't have a birth location, and we know that she died in 1974. And um, the grave marker, you can check this off if the grave marker indicates the age at death. Some graves will say um, five years, three months, two days old. Um, and that's what they're talking about there. And that'll open up, here I'll show you, that'll open up that opportunity for you to fill in that information. So, but we don't have that on this headstone, so, or this grave marker. So, but there was an inscription and it said wife and mother. So we're gonna add that. If I go down here to more options, I can add additional person if it's a group cemetery or things like that, or a, a, a family. And here I can select multiple. If we had headstones, they were next to one another and we knew they were part of the same family, I could group those together here, but I'm not gonna do that in this instance. So now I'm just going to, I've, I've looked at everything. I have everything correct. And um, I'm just going to add the transcription. Photo transcribed successfully. And now I see the second photo that I uploaded. And this is Joseph P. O'Donnell. Again, we don't have a birth and month, but we know he was born in 1891 and he died in 1953. There was no um, inscription on this headstone, so I'm just going to click Submit. So this is done. This is now completed all of the photographs that I took. I had limited time, so I didn't take very many photographs. Now on Find a Grave, sometimes they will have you um, transcribe other photographs. Find a Grave used to have you transcribe other users' uploaded photographs. But I haven't seen that lately, and I'm thinking that the reason that that's not the case is that they've had so many volunteers that they're caught up now, which is a great thing. So right now, the options on Find a Grave, and, and again, by the time you watch this, maybe they'll have other photographs that you can transcribe. But for right now, all I can do is transcribe the photographs that I've uploaded. So a couple of other things that I wanted to point out on Find a Grave if you go into your account, it'll also talk about the memorials that you've been to, the different cemeteries um, and pictures that you've taken. And so, and that's kind of nice to have that, to have that history. So uh, I just wanna show you one other thing here really quickly. 
Okay, so I'm back on the, fir the front page again. And if I scroll down to the bottom, I can click help, which will open up a new screen. And um, they've got common questions and tools and how to do a group project, the mobile apps, things like that. This is a great place to get additional information on Find a Grave. So hope that helps you with your Find a Grave photographs. Now we're gonna talk about Billion Graves. So when I logged into Billion Graves, I had my dashboard that first came up and this shows that over the last 12 months, I've helped um, 1,312 people find their ancestors with um, photographs and images that I've uploaded and the transcriptions that I've done right over here. And that's great. Um, there is some mail here that I didn't even notice that I had, so I should probably take a look at that, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. So let's talk about how to transcribe on Billion Graves. Here, if I go over the volunteer button, I can see take photos or transcribe or training videos. So if you have further questions, you can go to the training videos and that will tell you how to take photographs and how to transcribe them. They have some great little videos that will go into more information than I have, as well as hints on how to tra transcribe from the app. Now I will say that if you have time and you're at a cemetery, sometimes it's really nice to transcribe from the app at the cemetery because sometimes the headstones are really difficult to read and even though you've taken a good picture of them, it may still be difficult for somebody to just look at the picture or you even later to look at the picture and, um, and transcribe it properly. Whereas when you're at the cemetery and you can feel the bumps you know, made by the lettering and things like that, you may be able to better transcribe. So if you run across a really difficult headstone, you might wanna transcribe it right there at the cemetery and your app on your phone will walk you through that. So, but I'm gonna go back here to, um, so I want to transcribe. So I'm gonna go up here to volunteer and I'm going to go to transcribe. Now the first thing that Billion Graves is going to do is pull up photographs that you've taken previously and not transcribed. And in the meantime, cause this was quite a while ago, somebody else transcribed these headstones and now they're just asking me to verify the record. So right here it says, review each field and check the box if the field is transcribed correctly and make changes if it's not and add any details that are missing. So we have Robert Puerling, and we don't know what month and day he was born, but he was born in, he was born in 1927 and he died in 2010. There aren't any, it looks like he was an airplane pilot because of this airplane up here, but there weren't any religious symbols there and there wasn't any military information. And so, um, and then we see that whoever transcribed this did the right thing and then they added another person because this headstone was shared by a husband and wife. So they added his wife, Lorraine Purling, who was born in 1930 and died in 2015. And that's all correct. So I'm gonna check these. So she died when she was 85 years old. And all of that information is correct. So now I'm going to save. And now they're gonna pull up another another headstone image or gravestone image that I've put in. In this instance, we have a husband and wife buried together, but Sharon, the wife, has not passed yet. And that's something that happens frequently. People will um, go ahead and put their name um, on the grave marker that they've selected for their husband. And then when they pass, they'll be buried there with their husband and their um, cemetery or the uh, mortuary, or not the mortuary, but the graves, company, the gravestone company, I can't think of the name of it, um, will add the death date. So here I'm gonna check the information that they have. They have Jay Christensen, August 7th, 1959, April 8th, 2013, married, um, August, which is the same as sealed in this instance, August 15th, 1981, and it provided his, his age at death, so this information is all correct. And it didn't, and they didn't include the religion. However, I'm familiar with this building. This is the temple of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Los Angeles. So that means these people are Christian. And I don't know if they're going to specifically go into. Um, I don't. I've never done that before. So let's see if they have that. Um, I don't see Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. 
Maybe I missed it. I'll go look one more time. Oh, they do. So I've added that information. And then we have his wife that was listed there as well, her birth in May 25th, 1960, and her marriage. And then we don't have any other information. I'm gonna add her religion. And I'm gonna check all these things off, that they were correct. And I am going to, there were no epitaphs. Um, other than, actually, I will add the epitaph that they were sealed. And I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to add that to him as well. Nope, I guess I only have one spot to do that. And now I'm going to save. It took a little while, but now I have a a new headstone. Now this is not a headstone that I took the picture of as you can see down here. Now we have somebody else has uploaded a headstone and again, they're just asking me to verify it. Now sometime I may be being asked to input the information. Again, like we talked about before, they're going to have one person transcribe and then they're gonna have another person verify it. That way with two people involved in the process, they're hoping they get the information in there correctly so that when people search for these names, it will be correct. So it would be the same process as before. So that's how you transcribe cemetery records, the headstones and gravestones that you might take pictures of or that others have taken pictures of on Find a Grave or Billion Graves. I hope this has been of help to you and I hope that you can perform this service for other people because these records are really important and they're great to have as a genealogist in order to find information that your family might be otherwise missing. I'll provide some other cemetery hints at another date and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to include them in the comments and I'm happy to respond. I hope you have a great day. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and you can click my face right over there and I'll see you soon.